my YouTube friends. Today's video is sponsored by StreamTunes, but more on that later. Polypop Live can look pretty confusing when you first see it. Today I want to show you how to easily set it up and stream on whatever platform you want with Polypop Live in less than 10 minutes. So you know what? Let's get to it! Likes and comments are super easy things that you can do to help push this video to a wider audience. So take a second down below and let me know how I'm doing and hit that subscribe button. It's totally free and it really does help me to continue to make content that helps you. If you've never used Polypop before, it's totally free and there is a link in the description below so you can download it and check it out. You can follow along and that is the best way to learn. Now you should work through the quick tutorial provided when you start it up. It's really pretty helpful. But I know you already did that, right? Well, then okay, let's make it stream. The first thing I want to do in Polypop is create a couple of scenes and you can see that we should probably set up our microphone here. So we can select that in our library over here on the left and drop this down and see what microphone we're using. And we can set up our desktop audio. You want to set this to however you're going to be listening to it, probably your headphones. And once that's set up, I got some music here that's playing and we can see that the desktop audio is hearing the music. So that's all set up and ready to go we have the audio devices we're going to be using you can click the plus and of course add other audio devices if you want so I can go down here to the microphone and I can add a second one which brings us to how to get rid of things over here in the library we could just click this little minus key and then click yes and boom the second microphone is gone so let's click the plus and add some sources we're gonna add an app or a second monitor right here with the app screen capture and then you can just drop this down and select which screen you want to capture it's pretty simple you can capture the cursor or enable transparency we can just drag it over here into our view window and size it up to whatever size we want and there we go now we've added a source we can add other sources in here if we want we'll just drag up our music onto that display and we can actually adjust the opacity and that sort of stuff really easily and this adds cool effects because you can add things behind it or in front of it you can adjust the way that it fits let's click the plus and add a camera so there we go and then under webcam you've got all the different settings that you could possibly want here your format your resolution which device all that kind of stuff your frame frames per second, how you want it to be displayed, you can flip it, and we can just drag this and it will actually replace the other thing that we have. And you can see our camera is much bigger, so we can resize that, put it here, and it takes on the same display properties as the other thing that we drug it over. So we can adjust the opacity and turn it all the way up. And let's just delete that. Now you notice when I delete that, it is removed from the scene layout on the right hand side, but on the left hand side, we still have our app screen and our webcam in our library. So we can just go over here and click the plus and we can go to 3D objects and we'll scroll down here and select a 3D object that we want one of these things to be on and then we just click add and it automatically brings us up to our library where we can select what we want to put on here. So we'll just put on our desktop screen here and we'll move it over here and we can go down into transform and use this scale roller to scale it up. We can move it around. We'll go in here and we'll change the color of this background to black and we'll rotate it a little bit on the Y axis and scale it up to the way that we want it. And it's really that easy to create cool assets in here. So there we go. Now we have our monitor in there. We're going to click the plus and we're going to go to 2D and we're going to select a 2D pattern. We're going to add a little bit of a background in here and you can choose anything that's already in your library for your 2D pattern. And uh, so now we have our camera as our 2D pattern that's pretty cool but if we wanted to add something else or change it up maybe that's not what we want for our 2d pattern we can click the plus we can add an image source to our library and click open so now it's in our library we can just go over here to our 2d camera pattern and click pick and select another one and then we can size it and scale that asset any way we want pretty cool but that is basically the background that is really really neat and we just get it to the size we want and now I'm going to click the plus and we're going to go back into 3D objects and I'm just going to select another 3D object. I think this one right here will work and click add. And of course, in this case, I'm going to select my webcam. We're going to stick it on this little polygon thing here and we'll scale it up to the size that we want and move it into the correct position. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead 
and I'm gonna add a modifier to this. I'm gonna click this plus and we're gonna add a spin action. And so now when I click on spin, you can see it rotates our camera. I can scroll down here and I can choose different methods for it to rotate. There are a lot of different ones. I just want one simple rotation. And there we go, that looks pretty cool. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a random generator on that spin so it just randomly does it. And to do that, we're gonna come over here and we're gonna click the plus and we're gonna select repeating alert. And then we can go in here and set the interval that we want it to repeat at and we can set how random that interval is. We just drag this on alert over here to spin and now on some sort of interval, it will just spin our camera and add a lot of cool little activity to our live stream. And I'll just go in here, finalize the setup, and then I think it's probably time for us to go ahead and create another scene. So you just click the plus under scenes up here and you can see in the scene layout, we don't have any audio. So we're gonna drag the audio onto our preview box that we want in the scene. And then we're gonna click the plus over here in our library and we're gonna add another app screen capture. I'm gonna drop the source down and select this window here. This is actually a chat window. And then I'm gonna click this plus here and we're gonna go to crop and filter and I'm gonna crop this chat window up to what I'd wanna actually see on my live stream. And there we go, we'll click back. Then I'm gonna click the plus over here, go into 3D objects. I'm gonna select one of these vertical screens to put this on. And so then we'll just select the crop and filter in the library. And there we go, now we can scale it up and rotate it a little bit, move it into position. I can change the background color. And if I click the plus, we'll go ahead and add another screen in here. And on this screen, we're gonna put our application on there. Click OK, scale it up and stick it where we want it here. And we'll change the border color on that as well. And we'll rotate it just a little bit to give it some depth. Then we're gonna click the plus and we're gonna add another 3D element. And on this one in the library, we're gonna choose our webcam and we're just gonna move this over here and we'll go down to scale and scale it up. And you can see that it actually goes through our other screen. So what we need to do is go over here and adjust the Z axis. And this is how forward or backwards it is in the scene. We'll just move it forward so it's in front of that screen. And now it's all set. Now if we wanted to add that spin move, all we need to do is go into mods, click the plus and select the spin action select the type of spin that we want it to do. Click spin and there we go, we can see it does spin. And we'll go over here and we'll select our repeating alert that we already created. And we're just gonna drag this over into our spin. And now that's going to spin randomly like the one on the first scene did. And I wanna see which one is our chat. So I just turn on the eyeballs and turn them off until I figure out which one it is. And we're gonna add the spin action to this as well. And we'll adjust how it spins. And then I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna create another repeating alert. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I don't want it spinning at the exact same time as my camera is. I want it a little bit different. Our cameras on both scenes can be set the same, but we don't want the other assets that might be spinning to be set at the same time as the camera is. And now our little chat bar is gonna spin and do cool things on a random timeline. Next, I'm gonna click the plus and I'm gonna go and select a video source. We'll add this one in here because it wouldn't be right if we didn't. And then I'm gonna go over and select the desktop 3D object that we have our music on right now. And I'm gonna go down here and click pick and I'm just going to change it so it's that video. So now we have that video playing on one screen and this looks really cool. This is a really neat dynamic live stream. We can adjust the colors and all that sort of stuff, but really all that's left is for us to go live. Do you need good free music for your streams, but you don't want to worry about strikes to your channel? Well, Stream Tunes is the answer for you. Every live stream or video needs some sort of good music, right? But how do you find good music for free that's not gonna get you strikes to your live streams or your video? Today's sponsor, StreamTunes, is the answer. Now, StreamTunes is a 100% free platform of high quality DMCA safe music. And it's always free. No strings attached, no bogus signups, nothing. Just free. Not only that, but StreamTunes is available on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, and most 
if not all streaming services, including YouTube Music. And they have a library of more than 800 songs and it's growing by the day. Another really cool part about Stream Tunes is that every time you play their songs on any of the services, a donation is made to Music Counts. And this charity helps to keep music programs going in high schools all over Canada. And that's just awesome. Be sure to check out Stream Tunes for yourself. There is a link in the description. And like I said, it's totally 100% free. Now let's finalize our stream. All right, here in Polypop, we just hover over the go live section down here at the bottom and we're gonna click this little YouTube looking button. We're gonna click this. Then we're gonna click on YouTube and it brings up this box right here in your web browser and you just connect to your YouTube account. It says Polypop is authorized, which means we're ready to go. So all I have to do, I'm gonna go over here and check all of my settings to make sure they're right. And it's pretty much the same as you would do in OBS. 6,000 is the bit rate for 1920 by 1080 and you've got your audio bit rate 160 which is fine services YouTube live you can go to Twitch or Facebook as well if you decide to set that up and the setup works basically the same you have your default server and down here you can set up to record if you would like you just click the record thing on and select where you want your recordings to save and over here in YouTube you can see it is waiting for our broadcast signal so all we have to do once we have it all set up is go over here and click on this button right here you can see it says connect connecting to YouTube in the bottom left hand corner. We go over into YouTube and a few moments later, you see that our stream is coming up and there we go. So we are now live on YouTube. It's really that simple to go live with Polypop and have access to all the really cool features. If you wanna see how to add alerts to your Polypop live streams, you should definitely check this video out. Big thanks to the sponsors who support the channel. Their links are in the description below. I couldn't possibly do this without them or you. So thanks. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.